Chris and Rebecca Palmer are fed up of being mortgage slaves. They've sold their Bradford home, quit their jobs as a car parts dealer and sales manager, and are heading to Ireland with daughter Demelza to escape from modern life. So what's the first thing we're going to do when we get there, Demelza? Uh, the kettle on! They're swapping nine to five working life for the hard graft of being totally self-sufficient, growing their own food and keeping livestock. And if this isn't a big enough challenge, they're also turning this derelict house into a family home. But with very little money or DIY experience, Chris and Rebecca are in for a difficult year. Chris, you're an adult. I didn't know we were doing it until they've done it. Rebecca and Chris have chosen County Limerick in Ireland to pursue a simple rural life, away from the pressures of 21st century living. Well, the air is a little bit, just a little bit. Blow him. <laughs> <laughs> just going to be me and you and Demelza yeah. and the cats. Look so. at that. Not a telegraph pole in sight. Not a pylon in sight. Oh, Not no. a concrete and office even... block. What a view. These guys have moved to the middle of nowhere. It's the most stunning countryside. It's beautiful, but so remote and quite hard to get up these lanes as well. With £47,000 cash from the sale of their UK home, Chris and Rebecca bought this 19th century farmhouse with its stunning views across the valley. Hi, Rebecca. Hi. How are nice you? Nice to meet you. Nice to see you. You're well. Hi, Hi, Chris. Hi. With the house comes one and a half acres of land for their self-sufficient small holding. So what was life like for you before you moved here? We were working to pay the, to, for the building society to pay the mortgage. Um, I used to work in a really high-pressure job and I hated it. It's just got more and more intense, this feeling of frustration. So what is the dream for you two? The dream is living here in the countryside, um, being completely self-sufficient, spending more time together, seeing more of Demelza. Yeah. Still probably get up at six o'clock, but hey, when the sun comes over that hill there and shines through your bedroom window, you want to get up. Before that idyllic life can start, they have to turn this derelict house into a family home. A definite ruin, Chris. A definite ruin. <laughs> A lot of Sitting work, room. A lot. Yeah. And that roof's in a bit of a state, isn't it? And I see you've actually got some structural damage there, haven't you, where the lintels have fallen apart over the windows? It's like that on every window, I think. Every single window needs a new lintel and needs new support as well. Yeah. But underneath the decades of decay, the original character of the building really shines through. So this fireplace is stunning, isn't it? Yes. It's, yeah, it's huge. Yeah. Absolutely huge. Well, this is what sold it to Rebecca. Really? She, she walked in and she just, oh my God, come and look at this. Chris and Rebecca want to breathe life back into this 150 year old farmhouse. In the living room, the stone walls will be restored and left exposed, with the focal point being a roaring open fire. But the real heart of the home will be the kitchen. Its flagstone floors and ingle nook fireplace will give it a rustic feel. Upstairs needs to be completely rebuilt, creating a bathroom and two bedrooms, all with spectacular views across the valley. Chris and Rebecca also have their work cut out, starting their new self-sufficient life. On their one and a half acres of land, they will build a polytunnel to grow vegetables, keep chickens and geese, and plant a fruit orchard. This is a fantastic dream and one enormous challenge. How much have you got to renovate this building? Uh, uh, about £14,000. £14,000? Yep. Yes. <laughs> Ambitious? Yes, very. Have you got any idea what you're taking on? Yeah, I think, we've, well, for me, we've taken on my absolute dream from... I cannot remember not wanting to own a really old house in the country. Would never have considered a new house. This has got character. It may well have character, but even if they do most of the work themselves, I'd estimate it would take at least £50,000 to restore this house to its former glory. That's over three times their budget. Their 14 grand also has to cover their living costs until they become self-sufficient. 
Rebecca is in charge of managing this tiny pot of money from their makeshift home in the caravan. Um, insulation, I've got the 600, the roof is you know, moving swiftly on. Uh, uh, we'll just move swiftly <laughs> on past the roof costs, which could cater for about 25% of the cost of the bills, but yeah. let's not worry about that for yeah, the well, time we're, being. Yeah, well, we're sort of working on that at the moment. You know, let's, right, let's get some okay. prices in before we worry okay. about that. Yeah. <laughs> I'm pleased um, you're laughing, because I'm worried to, I have to, no, because, you, you know, you've, you've got to go with it and let it, and let it happen, because... You know, but that sounds like the worst project managing advice you could ever have. I'm hoping Chris has a more realistic attitude. Do you think £14,000 is going to be enough to make it habitable? Honestly. Not really. But don't tell Rebecca I said that. <laughs> Are you worried? Very. I woke up the other morning, I just had my head in my hands and I thought, I physically cannot do the work. Did you? Yeah. You know, she, she thinks it'll work. I want to make sure it does work. I know that he's capable of doing it. I really do know that. I'm not just saying that. I know that he's capable of doing it. He, he does everything he does, he does to a very high standard. But what happens if you fail? Well, I just don't think we will. But to be perfectly honest, I was saying to Chris earlier that I would rather die trying. Chris and Rebecca are making one of the bravest life changers I've ever seen and I really admire their sheer determination to achieve the near impossible. But 14 grand is nowhere near enough to renovate this house, even if you're doing all the work yourself. And on top of the build, they've got land to cultivate and livestock to buy. I just hope they can somehow keep this dream alive. The family have come to Ireland to escape 21st century life. They want to lead a simpler existence, supporting themselves by living off the land. Oh, look, here, look, look, strawberries, wild, wild strawberry plants. <laughs> We're having them in the summer. Yeah. This is an unbelievably brave dream. They have just £14,000 to renovate this derelict house and turn their one and a half acres of rocky soil into fertile land. This is the reason what we've moved to Ireland for, so we'll be prepared in the land to grow the vegetables. You know, basically that is our supermarket, so it's different planning to just doing it as a little hobby at home. It certainly is, as their very survival depends on it. Their ambition to keep livestock begins cautiously with six chickens. No, let go of the bloody chicken. Come on, back on home territory please. I wouldn't be at all surprised if I wake up in the morning and they're all dead in a heap in the, in the house, which would be absolutely tragic, but, but because we don't know what we're doing, I just don't know. <laughs> they're equally inexperienced at house renovation, and this one is certainly no quick-fix DIY job. It hasn't been lived in for 40 years and needs a new roof, windows, floors, plumbing and electrics. It's an intimidating challenge for Chris, who's doing all the work himself. I do feel as if there's a lot of pressure is on me to do it and not really having the skill and knowledge of it is difficult. Yeah, Let's see how it goes. To add to his pressure, Chris is determined to move the family in for Christmas, as living in a caravan on a building site is no home for a five-year-old. It's a bit cold here, and very muddy. I'm getting coffee for my now. What do you most like making? Try the quiz to see. She, she's not at all into the whole house building routine. To her, I think it's a, well, thanks a lot. You know, I had a really nice, comfortable home with, you know, great school, lots of friends, and you've brought me here. The first step in turning this dilapidated ruin into a home is the back-breaking job of laying the concrete floors. I'm, I'm very nervous because we've never laid concrete before, ever. We've got no levels, we've got no edges, so it's going to be somewhat by eye. Which is always good, um, but as long as it's not absolutely wibbly up and down like mountain ranges, then we're okay, I think. Come on, push! Then you try to get a goose in the oven. Yay! 
Chris and Rebecca have 40 wheelbarrows of concrete to rake and level before it sets. It's uh, going to be a long job. Ugh. And it's going to be, have to be endured, I'm afraid. After five hours of hard labour, they've done it. It's, you wouldn't believe that a simple thing like a concrete floor could make something look so habitable. It looks really inviting. I have muscles aching in places that I didn't even know I had muscles. I just feel that like we've achieved something really big. With winter setting in, the pressure is on to get the house habitable. The next step is rebuilding the whole of the collapsed second floor. Putting in joists is a two-man job, but Chris is tackling it on his own. It is a big job for me doing this. <coughs> yeah, I am working on my own most of the time. I'm actually getting up and thinking, I've got work to do which is a lot of work too, as you can see, but I'm doing it for myself and I feel more rewarded. Chris is doing really well, but the number one priority in any renovation is the roof, and they've been let down by their roofing contractor for the second time. What happened? You didn't, didn't come last week. To be honest, it's, it's got more, more important than that now because no, you, you're going to have to get somebody out here in the next couple of days. It's not just the roofer who hasn't turned up, the remote location means that deliveries aren't making it to sight. The thing is, the Ula Road up into Dune is quite windy. I don't know how... Will that road be OK for a lorry, Chris? Uh, yeah. Well, my timetable really is, is almost a waste of time. It's almost... I pay lip service to having some sort of planning, really, because, because I have to plan, but then some or other good won't turn up or some or other workman won't turn up. It's just snowballs into this sort of chaos, really. We're just not getting the work done. It's really frustrating. When I was last in Ireland, Chris and Rebecca were aiming for the very optimistic deadline of Christmas. But with so much work to do, I'd be surprised to find them on schedule. Yeah. What do you think? Well, you have done quite a lot, actually. You've got the concrete floors in. Yep. Yep. You've done the joists, yeah. spruced new, it all new, new ceiling. Take, all bolted yeah. nicely together. Yeah. What about the roof? Uh, what roof? Not no. yet. So you haven't had the roof done yet? No. No. Ah. We've been struggling getting a the roof. The scarce we... here, roofers. Why? As soon as I told them where it was, it was too remote, don't want to know. Wouldn't, weren't interested. I never thought that you'd be a victim of being too remote. I never thought no. the tradesman no. would just say, I'm not coming out there because you're too far away from normal yeah. life. No, we didn't. Never from occurred normal to us. Life. Because there is so much remote property in Ireland, I assumed, stupidly, that, that they were obviously used to that, you know. But apparently that's why they're all derelict, because <laughs> nobody <laughs> wants to live in them and nobody wants to do them up. The big, big worry is when you restore any old building, the first thing that you want to tackle is the roof, isn't it? You want well, to be wind and water tied and get the roof sorted out. Yes. Well, we tried. If we'd have waited to have that done first, we'd have still been studying here like it was three months ago. And even though you've done <clears> quite a lot of work, it looks to me like you're sort of ground to a halt a little bit until that roof is done. Is that right? Yeah. Yes, it is, yeah. I'm hoping they've made more progress with their dream to be self-sufficient. Their first goal was to build a polytunnel to cover and protect their vegetables through winter. So how's the polytunnel then? How's it going? Well, it's going quite slowly. <laughs> ah, yeah. a bit more than slowly. Well, it's, yeah, the holes are dug. The holes took... <laughs> I thought the idea of a polytunnel was that you had a sort of tunnel made out of... Poly. Poly. Yeah. But I don't see any of that here. I just see a few bits of post in the ground and a few rows of string. That's it. I would say that, you know, trying to tackle a project like putting up a polytunnel and setting up a self-sufficient small holding was not something that went hand in hand with building a house. Mm. You just cannot do two such major things at the same time. It's a little bit of a worry, isn't it? Because this, this really is part, the big part of the dream for you. But we were never going to be self-sufficient this winter. It was impossible. You, know, you cannot grow a full selection of food to support our family. Yeah. In, uh, you know, starting but you're hoping in to at least get 
some of it, weren't yes, you? Just yes, to minimise your yes. costs. Rome wasn't built in a day, as they say. <laughs> Rome definitely wasn't built in a day. I just hope you do it in my lifetime. Oh, you we know. will. We will. Cultivating the land and renovating the house at the same time was always going to be a near impossible feat. With the Irish weather pounding this already dilapidated building, their priority has to be the roof. Until they find a roofing contractor, none of the essential work like plumbing and electrics can go ahead, and all of the work on the house has to stop. At this rate, they're facing a long, grim winter in the leaky caravan. Oh, it's just getting damp. I mean, these sort of caravans are not designed for living in, in winter months. It's just getting silly, really, absolutely silly. I mean, we must have been a bit crazy to ever think that we could live in a caravan over winter months. <clears throat> this is ridiculous. Your hands are really cold. You've not been wearing your mittens, have you? You don't see yourself. What's the matter? Mm. News has reached England of the poor living conditions. And with Christmas just four weeks away, Rebecca's mother and sister arrive with a few home truths. You can't have a child in a, a cold bit like this all the winter, you know. She'll have cold after cold. I knew this would be a bad idea. The, the mother-in-law visit before we were ready. You know, it'd be, well, this is what you should do, this is what you should be doing. You do need to have one room warm, and I don't give a damn what it looks like. It doesn't matter, as long as it's warm and dry, and you're all... it's, it's no worse than here. Already overwhelmed by the amount of work to do, the burden of responsibility is starting to weigh heavily on Chris's shoulders. I mean, would your self-confidence and your pride feel... feel really hammered if you weren't in there at Christmas? If we weren't in there at Christmas... Oh, I don't know. I don't know what we'd do. Demals is more focused on Father Christmas coming, and she's really upset that he's not going to be able to come down the, caravan on the, chim uh, the chimney on the caravan. So we've got to be in there for her sake, so Father Christmas can get him. What's it like for her being here now? I can't imagine what's going through her little head at the moment. She's just bored, because she's got no friends here. You know, you're under pressure here on the build. This is all on you, really. You're, you're in isolation, very much in isolation. Yeah. How that's... do you feel about it? Pressurised more than anything to get my family in there with a sound roof over the head. So with Christmas just three weeks away, Chris and Rebecca decide to move into the house, even though the roof work still hasn't been done. They make a determined push to get at least one room habitable, and within the week, the house is piled high with building materials. I'm getting a bit worried now about the finance, the budget that we've got for this project, because Rebecca just says, yeah, OK, we, we need that, we get that, and... You know, we go out and buy it, whatever's needed, but it's getting a bit worrying. How are we doing on budget? Because I need some more money to buy timber. Yeah, I am actually slightly concerned about that, but we will, we'll be all right. Just... You're concerned? Well... Have we got enough? Yes. Despite the dwindling funds, Rebecca's desperate to get heat into the house and splashes out on a £3,000 wood-burning stove. <laughs> That's a fifth of their entire budget. Isn't it gorgeous? Do you know, all my life I've wanted one of these. My whole life I have wanted one of these. Look, isn't it just beautiful? It's shiny. Just totally, totally symbolic of the whole self-sufficiency, self-reliance. The whole thing is, is about this. With the stove up and running, they have a temporary kitchen and their first taste of the country life dream. It's not finished, but we've got some furniture in and this range cooker throws out some good heat. Still a little bit of a work in progress, but it's brilliant to be able to cook real food. It already feels like a sort of country kitchen, even though it's a bit primitive at the moment. I understand Chris and Rebecca's desperate need for some home comforts, but with the roof work still to be done, this is madness.
At last, the roof work begins. And it's soon clear why this was the job that should have been done at the very start. The old roof timbers can only go in one direction. And all Chris can do is watch. You don't want to talk to this stuff. Yeah. That's that skirting board lining, is that? Oh, is that nice? You don't want this to get punctured because this is what's going on up the walls to keep the damp out. There's as much crap in there now as the one when we came to this place. You know, we spent days cleaning it all out and now there's as much in again. There's all the tools, electrical tools in there, there's all the insulation. There's all the membrane. At the moment, it's all just under a pile of rubble that's crumbled inwards. As Chris struggles to salvage his materials, Rebecca's out shopping, oblivious to the chaos raining down on her kitchen. Um, can we have three packs of your bacon here, please? Okay, and the black pudding, please. To be honest, I think she'll be in tears because she thought she got her own little haven set up down there in that room. We didn't expect all this crap to be left all over a nice stove. So I think she'll be upset. Hey, so I can't get caught with these sheets. What is all this? I say mess is not a problem. A problem is huge chip in Rayburn, floor smashed. Oh. You know, that's a problem. And I would have expected you to have managed that. Oh, I can't say don't knock that brick out. Chris, you're an adult. I didn't know they were doing it until they'd done it. Chris, you're in charge when I'm not here. Yes, you do wonder at tradesmen that can know that you've just put your heart and soul into three months of doing up a house and then just throw rubbish into it as if it, you know, as if it's just another building site. You do wonder at that. This is a huge setback for the family. The house has no roof, it's covered in rubble, and they have no option but to spend their first Christmas in Ireland back in the caravan. It's been five months since the Palmers moved to Ireland. Their Christmas deadline has been and gone, and they're still living in the damp, cramped caravan. The roof work is finally done, but it's left them with just three grand in the pot and a massive repair job to do. This stonework from here up to the, the, the roof here, sort of like a triangle, was all knocked out by the roofer. Now, we had no idea that he was going to leave us with this job. Sometimes I lay awake at night and think about a dream of winning the lottery and being able to just pay a builder to come and just do the whole thing and know that we would be in it about a month if we did that. <laughs> and it's frustrating, but, but hey, when we're finished, we'll have the satisfaction of being able to say to everybody, this is the house that we built or restored. But juggling being a brickie and a mother is slowing down progress. Okay, well, I've, got, I've got to get on. I've got to get on. I've got to get on. Can you please play with me? I can't. I've got to get on. We want to move in the house, don't you? I just want you to play with me. Don't get stroppy. We've got to do the house. I think it's a battle of wills for Demelza to settle, you know. She's determined she isn't going to settle. We're determined she is. Eventually someone will win. All right. All right. All right. All right. All right. All right. She's so frustrated about about not having a house, you know? She's used to having a bedroom where she could go off and play with all her toys and get all her dollies out, and now she can't. She can't do any of those things, and it's very difficult for her. If Demelda doesn't settle, the entire dream is under threat. She desperately needs some home comforts, so she's gone back to England for a week to stay with Grandma. Bye. Oh, I'm going to miss you. Leaving Chris and Rebecca alone to get the work done. First job, the windows. This one's going to actually be a window seat. The end will never be in sight with this. A never-ending list of jobs to be done. Oh, don't want to fuck that go! Plasterboarding's been 
proving a bit of a, a nightmare because we've never done it before and getting eight by four sheets is really difficult. I think okay, I'm a big problem. Big problem. But with this hive of activity, the budget is disappearing fast. There's just £1,500 left. The budget is looking terrifying. There's an awful lot of timber to be bought, plus um, put in a bathroom suite, plumb the house. With every spare penny needed for the house, they must cut down their living costs by starting to produce their own food. At last, the polytunnel is built and they plant their first harvest. Yeah, I'm growing my vegetables to sustain us and to be, you know, to be self-sufficient. And every other year, it's been a short walk down to the supermarket to just buy some carrots if the carrots didn't come up or whatever. But this year, it's so important. I feel like the pressure's on to get everything to grow. Fingers crossed, by spring, they should be enjoying their first homegrown produce. With the new roof on and windows in, this house is finally wind and watertight. Chris has finished constructing the second floor, and I'm looking forward to seeing the upstairs for the very first time. Wow, what a difference. Uh, what a difference. Look how much you've done, Chris. Uh -huh. You've got the roof on. A long-awaited new roof. <laughs> well, that for me was, was absolutely everything, because you were doing all this work internally, without a decent roof on top. Mm. I've never seen a smile on your face through most of the project, <laughs> exactly. and now I have. Yeah, you've turned the corner now. Yeah, yeah, well, it's, it's like I said all along. I said to you then, I believe, that once the roof's on, I will be happy. You've got the confidence with it, with it now. So. I'm chuffed to bits. I'm absolutely chuffed to bits for you. I think it's brilliant. Let's go and have a look at this bedroom. Yeah, because sure. this was a double height space before, wasn't it? That's you right, You didn't actually yeah. even have any floors in at all. There's nothing in here when you... This is great, isn't it? You get the three... Windows, you get the three aspects, which is beautiful. And this one opened up that view, which we've never seen, because no, from ground level you can't see that for the trees. You can see right down into the village. I'm actually relieved and quite impressed as to how much you've actually done since the last <laughs> time I was here. But there's still a lot of work to do, you know, when, when you think about it from electrics to plumbing, you know, floor finishes, wall finishes, insulating the roof, bathrooms, tiling. But because you've got all that work on, how's the um, money going? That's not a question that you should be asking me. <laughs> <laughs> Where's Rebecca? <laughs> Have you any idea how much money you've got left? We've got none. You've got none? We've run out. Did you've you not got... know? No, I didn't. Completely, we got a letter from the bank saying, you have got no money, you're overdrawn. So what happens now? Well, I can't carry on with the work. Very mm. frustrating. On just £14,000, Chris and Rebecca have done well to even get this far. But now, with not a penny in the bank and no income, they're in a desperate situation. I want to know the project manager's plan of action. You've got a house that, that's nowhere near finished. You know, with, with maybe some hidden costs that you don't even know of yet. Uh, there's no contingency, there's no nothing. So you've got a house that is nowhere near finished. And, and when you're someone who, if you like, for your lifestyle, you've made a conscious decision that you will not take on any debt, you're in quite a fragile position, aren't you? Um, I, I, if you say so, yeah. <laughs> I can't agree with you because I, I don't see it that way. Unless something is essential um, to the quality of life, i.e. a bath or whatever, then it won't be borrowed for. It'll be done when it's, when it's, when it's saved up for. The kitchen was always going to be the range and a table. But you still have some costs, you still have living costs going out every single week. Mm -hmm. So you've got, to, you've got to contend with that between now and the end of the build as well. I've been dramatically hard, hard up in various points in my life and yeah, the world doesn't stop revolving just because you run out of money. It's, it's a big risk. It's a fine line, isn't it? I mean, mm. you're right. Mm. You're right on the edge now. Until Rebecca finds a financial solution, her unbroken spirit is all this family have to pin their hopes on. I, I'm worried about it. I, I've, I've always like I've always had a little stash as they say of money, but it's gone. Nothing left.
We do not want to get to old age and sit with our rugs over our knees saying, you know, when we said we were going to move to Ireland and we didn't do it or we gave up. I just don't want to be in that situation. I want to have died trying. Rebecca's survival instinct finds a way to keep their dream alive. I'm sort of drip feeding the, uh, our sort of finances at the moment with a bit of sewing. Sewing is something that I've fallen back on at various points in my life for, for making a few quid. Um, but really we want to sort of focus on it more and it, I, I think it, it can be developed into a, a way of earning enough money to help us finish off the house and, and to just pay the few bills that we will have once we've finished. But the extra pennies don't stretch far. Progress is painfully slow, especially for a five-year-old who hasn't had a bedroom for seven months. I can't play with my toys, I really miss them. They're in the container. Do you ever feel a sense of guilt when you think that you've taken yes. them away from England? Yeah, I do. Mm, I do yeah. too. Mm. Probably the most important thing is to get her bedroom finished, so yeah. she's got her own space. You know, get that room finished and get her in her own bedroom for the first time in months. So she said to me the other day, we need to talk to the people who bought our, our, our house and ask them if they'll give it back. We, that know, would bring me to tears if I had uh, well, well, can you imagine? I've, I've, far I mean, I've, I've had, mm. there, has been, there have been sessions where yeah. I've sat in tears with her in the evening when she's coming from school and she's been that upset. But I just said to her, I said, look, it doesn't work like that, sweetheart. You know, it just doesn't work like that. If Demelza was not happy for a long time here, would you ever give up the dream and go back? Well, there's no way, no disrespect to um, Bradford area and things like that, we'd move back there. It's not just for us, it's for, for the Nelson as well. If everything stayed as it is now, sleeping in a caravan, half living in a house, but working on the house, chipping away at it a tiny little bit at a time even, I'd still say that life was as perfect as it's ever been for me, ever. Mm, yeah. Rebecca been making the evening meal, and I'll say, right, I'll take the dog out. So I'll take the dog for a walk up the lane just before it's getting, well, as the sun's going down at this time of the year. And I just stop and listen. I can just hear the silence and the birds. This is what life is about. There's no doubt that this is now home for Chris and Rebecca, despite their half-finished house. But Rebecca's mum still needs convincing. She's back and looking for evidence of progress. Right, let's have a little quick look at what's going on. She just thought, oh, I'll never be able to do this. But there you go, I think I've proven her wrong now, so I think she should be. I hope she's proud of us both, what we've done. Are we going to look at the lounge? Right, this is uh, oh. a bit like living in a cave, still. This well, bit. there's a floor in here. There wasn't a floor yeah, in that's here when you true. came last there is, time. You can't see the sky, can you? No. <laughs> uh, well, are you sort of satisfied with it now, you know, that you're getting on all right? As long as it's done for the winter, we're not really that bothered. We're not going to And you think here. it will be? Yeah. With all the other jobs as well? Um, yeah, I think it will. I wouldn't take money on it, but there you go. don't really think she has any real grasp of the amount of work we've had to tackle, really. I didn't feel that she appreciated that we were doing what we wanted to be doing. Um, but to be honest, I, I, it's all I ever dreamed of. And really, I don't mind if Mum doesn't like it. I'm not really bothered. So. But the visit has had an unexpected outcome. The family saved the day with a cash donation to give them a fighting chance of finishing the bills. It's great news that the money's coming in which means that we can, we can get the bathroom fitted, we can get the heating finished off. If she hadn't have done that, we would have been in a position of having to save up for every single thing that we needed, so it would have taken us absolutely years. Gift from God, literally. It would be nice and warm. This money is a lifesaver. The electrics can now go in, and for the first time in eight months, they've got hot running water. We have a bath, so that is just brilliant. Is that better? Yes. Mm. We, we've really turned the corner with Jamal's roots and she feels like we have a home again. She does little things like when she goes up, she go, you can send her upstairs, she'll get her pyjamas on, trot along the landing and brush her teeth and wash her face and do all that sort of stuff. And I think it feels like a normal house, you know? That's nice, <laughs> thank you. At last, Demelza is starting to settle and she's making friends. He always comes to play with me. 
and sometimes he stays and has dinner with us. Summer's arrived in Ireland, and the Palmers are working hard on their land. Yeah, much better. Far superior, Mr Palmer. This is now doing the kind of work that I want to do, rather than... I hate DIY, especially on the house. I wish I could afford just to get builders in and do that, and I'll carry on doing this. Dinner is at last a homegrown fair. I'm now able to cook um, the occasional meal with 90% of our own produce. Last night, hard-boiled some eggs with some new potatoes and some uh, salad stuffs from the tunnels. But the menu Shea Palmer is about to get a little more exciting. Ooh. Ooh. Five geese and one egg. Fantastic. You're going to grow nice and big and fat and yummy for Christmas. Uh, this, is our, this, this represents our first livestock that we can actually eat. Um, it's going to be a while, so they've got to grow and be ready for us, but uh, when we do, it's going to be quite exciting because they're going to be our first meat. Grab the bird by its legs with both hands. Keep the back of the bird away from you. Lower the head to the ground and get someone else to lay a broomstick across the neck just behind the head. Tread on both ends of the broomstick and pull the legs upwards until you feel the neck break. No, they're too nice and I love them. I'm more worried about doing it wrong. Yeah, I think that's the main way, isn't it? Where's yeah, it we don't want to hurt the thing or make it, you know, injure it. We want to either kill it or not kill it. I don't want to talk about it anymore, just stop it! With Chris and Rebecca focusing all their efforts on the land, the house renovation has been neglected. There is still plastering, flooring and tiling to be done, but nothing's been touched in over a month. How frustrating has it been for you not being in the house, not being finished and moved in? Um, it's very frustrating. I, I miss all our possessions. I am very tired of living in the caravan. I have had enough. My cats have had enough. I want to get out. I don't want to be in there forever. This house is full of half-finished DIY jobs and needs one final big push from Chris, but he's worn out and appears to have lost all momentum. This is just you and Rebecca doing this. There's no one else. It's all no. down to you two, and it must be so difficult juggling the build and working the land at the same time. It is, it is. You feel guilty working on the house and you think you should be doing the land because we need the land for the veg and then when you're doing the land you feel guilty because you should be doing work on the house and it's just pulling. There's so much still to do. Have you got any idea? When are you going to finish this? Oh, are you going to finish it? Oh, I, it's not if. I think we, we will finish it. Um, but when? No idea. I knew it would be difficult but I didn't think it'd take this long. Well you need to pick yourself to up and yeah. get the drive to push this on and, and get this yeah. place done. I mean you'd be a hero mate. If you get your family in oh, here living in you. this place <laughs> the dream will come true won't it? That'll be it. Yeah. This family are so close to their dream I would hate to see them fall at the last hurdle but whether they sink or swim all rests on Chris's shoulders. here the Palmer's house was still very much a building site and I got the sense that Chris was starting to have doubts they'd ever finish. Now it's two months later and I'm hoping they found a way of getting out of that crammed caravan and into something they can finally call home. <laughs> So nice to see you. Lovely well. to see you. Good to see you, Chris. Hi. What a transformation. This I can't is. believe it. And the caravan. Gone. Is it gone? Gone. Gone. Disappeared. Yep. Now, it what's it like inside? Is it finished? Come and see. A year ago, the kitchen was a crumbling, dusty wreck. Wow. Look at that. Isn't it absolutely beautiful? It's fantastic. I can't believe it. Hello. I really, I never thought you would do it. Well, I didn't. knew we would. Neither did I. <laughs> <laughs> it's a real home now. You know, you can actually come in and, and, and feel like you're in a home. Yeah, and then you've got your range cooker, the Engelnook fire all beautifully restored. 
Oh, it's fabulous. I feel like a proper farmhouse wife. Do you? It's just absolutely wonderful. I've dreamed all my life of owning a house like this, definitely. All my life. When they bought the house, the second floor had collapsed. Chris rebuilt it all by himself and has created a beautiful, fresh country bedroom. The most beautiful bedroom we've ever had. It's just wonderful. But what sense of achievement do you have now after doing this? I honestly didn't think I could do it. And we've done it. To see it now as a home, and even Demelza calls it home, but now that she's happy, it makes me feel happy. This whole journey and building this house and taking on the responsibility and pressure that you have has changed you. It's mm. given you a new confidence in life. It mm. has, definitely. At last, Demelza has a bedroom of her own and is reunited with her toys. Do you think this is the best bedroom you've ever had? Definitely. <laughs> My old bedroom is about the size of a mouse hole. The size of a mouse hole? It was tiny. <laughs> this house is now full of character, and the exposed stonework gives it a delightful rustic charm. The living room, however, is far from finished but I'm promised it'll be done by, you've guessed it, next Christmas. Chris and Rebecca have done what I thought impossible. Thanks to family donations and Rebecca's sewing, they spent £30,000 on the renovation, double their original budget, but it's still an amazing achievement. They can now live mortgage-free for the rest of their lives. And they're well on the way to a self-sufficient life. We have been good girls. All on form today. This is my breakfast. All their fruit and veg is now homegrown, and they're enjoying the rewards of being their own bosses. So many people dream of that. A lot of people talk about it and leading a good life like you are, but I'm brave enough to do it. Mm. And yeah. you two did it. Yeah. There's no way I would swap this for anything now. Mm. No way. But how viable is it to be completely self-sufficient. I'm thinking, you know, things like Demelza's clothes or shoes for school or... Are you going to carry on sewing to keep some money coming in? Yeah, definitely. Uh, we've uh, got this idea for... Build, we've got to build some outbuildings and we've got an idea for incorporating a workshop into it that, that we could run some classes so I could teach people different sewing techniques and we could feed them nice, healthy, organic, homemade, self-sufficient lunches <laughs> and things. That's nice lovely, projects. isn't it? This simple business plan is the final piece of the jigsaw to make their new life perfect. What amazes me is that you've had this dream since you were a kid and you've done it in less than a year. It's unbelievable. This young lady here, she's <laughs> pushed me and pushed me <laughs> and we've done it. How does that feel? Fantastic. I'm so proud of Chris, so proud of him, really immensely proud of him. This is your piece of heaven, isn't it? This is your escape from the world. It's completely magical. It's like a fairy tale. Having very distinct dreams as a child of living in the country, having all these chickens, and uh, and then actually finding, you know, waking up and finding yourself actually living it, it's just, it was what I was, it's what I've always wanted to do. It's what I actually think I was cut out for. Um, and that's just indescribably magical. Against all the odds, Chris and Rebecca have done it. They've left behind a life where they were slaves to their mortgage and the stresses of 21st century living. And they've created their dream, the simple good life and the perfect place that they can now call home. In just one year, they're living the life they could have only imagined. This one's called Christmas dinner. It's Easter Sunday dinner. <laughs> Next week, the Nuttles move to Suffolk for a better family life. It's nice for me, but for the kids, they come out of school and daddy's there. I haven't been rude to you at all. But achieving their dream is tough. What is that?